So when you're in Adobe Photoshop and you're going through the left hand toolbar, one of the tools you might stumble into is the burn tool. And to be honest, I've never really given the burn tool much thought, but it is actually a great tool to learn when you're a beginner in Adobe Photoshop. So in this video, we're going to learn exactly what the burn tool is and why you might want to use it. So as you can see, I have Adobe Photoshop open and on the left here, I have an image which we're going to be using to actually demonstrate the burn tool. And then on the right, I've also got a range of luminosities, just some highlights, midtones and shadows, just so we can explain how the burn tool actually works. But of course, first of all, we need to actually be able to find the burn tool in Photoshop. So if you've never actually stumbled into the burn tool, it will be found on the left hand toolbar right here. And as you can see, it's located just below the blur tool and it's called the burn tool right here. If you can't automatically see it, it might be set to the dodge tool. So just make sure you left click and hold on the tool and then select the burn tool, which is the second option. The keyboard shortcut to all of these tools is the letter O and that's both for Windows and Mac. So just making sure we have the burn tool selected. As you can see, our cursor automatically changes. Now, if your cursor actually doesn't show anything, so it might look like this, what you need to do is make sure you have the correct layer selected. So what you can do is go to the layers panel on the right, either create a new layer, use the background layer you've already got, or you can select a layer you've already made. So I'm gonna quickly select this layer on the right here. So what actually is the burn tool? Well, the burn tool effectively allows us to make areas of our image darker. And it does this by either targeting the highlights, shadows, or midtones. So before we can actually use the burn tool, we need to select one of these three areas to target. We can do that at the top of Photoshop right here. So as you can see, we can select the range. And at the moment it's set to highlights, but you can also select midtones and shadows. The next, we also need to change the exposure which is effectively the strength of how much darker you're going to make that area. So at the moment it's set to 50% and I'm actually going to leave it right there. So at the moment we have the highlight selected and if we go to our range on the right here, if I actually move my cursor and hold and drag once, you'll see that the highlights are automatically affected. The midtones are half affected because it does contain some highlights and then the darker areas aren't really affected at all. So if I keep going, as you can see, the highlights become much, much darker while the other two aren't affected as dramatically. Whereas if I were to select a different range, for example, let's say we select the shadows. If I now move my cursor over this range, as you can see, the highlights aren't really affected at all. The midtones are half affected, just like we had before, but the shadows are also made much darker. Now it's hard to actually see the shadows become darker in this case, but this is actually the case. Then the last option we also had was the midtones. So that's actually affecting these gray areas. So as you can see, this is sort of gonna affect all three, but more dramatically the midtones. So as you can see, the highlights aren't really effective at all, whereas the midtones are made much darker and the shadows aren't really affected much either. So how could we actually use this to make parts of our image much darker? Well, for example, the image that we have right here, let's say we want to add a vignette around our image. So I want to make the edges of our image much darker so we can focus all our attention on the subject itself. Well, what I first need to do is make sure I have the correct layer selected. So as you can see, I can go to the layers panel and select that layer. Now the immediate issue that we're going to face is that we can't actually use the burn tool on this layer. And the reason for it is because it is a smart object. And this is the downside of using the burn tool over using adjustment layers in Adobe Photoshop. So when we use adjustment layers with masks in Photoshop, we're creating a non-destructive process, which effectively means that we can always go back and actually undo those changes later. However, with the burn tool, you actually need to use rasterized layers. So what this would actually involve is changing our layer by right clicking and selecting a rasterized layer. And this changes our layer from smart object to a rasterized layer, which allows us to use the burn tool. And the downside of this is that we're actually applying the burn tool effects onto the layer itself, which can't actually be undone in the future. So that's something just to bear in mind when you're using the burn tool and it might be a slight downside, but it's still a great tool if you want to quickly be able to make areas of your image much darker. And it's great if you're not worried about having to be able to change it later. So as you can see, we've rasterized our layer. So I can now go ahead and actually create a vignette around our subject. So I might start on the midtones. So I'm just gonna make my brush tool slightly larger and I might also increase the exposure ever so slightly to say 80%. So if I start to move my brush around the edges and just click a few times, as you can see, I can start to make parts of this image much darker to create this vignette effect around my subject. So by making these parts of the image darker, all of the focus is slowly coming onto our subject. As you can see, we've affected the midtones very heavily 
but we might also want to actually be able to change the shadows just to make them dark too. So I'm going to change the range of the shadows and then continue and actually affect the shadows in our image. Now, as you can see, this is quite rough and it's actually dramatically increasing the contrast in our image. So if you want to be able to ensure that that doesn't happen, if I quickly undo this, what we can do is select the exposure and actually reduce this. So the best technique for using the burn tool is to ensure that you're using a low exposure. So for example, at 10%. And this allows you to gradually build up the amount of burn you're actually applying to your image. And this basically means that you won't overdo it and actually create a very high contrasted image. And if you make sure you also use the correct ranges, so for example, also affect the midtones, and not just one of the ranges, you'll be able to get a better blend, which makes it look slightly more realistic. And that essentially is how you can use the burn tool in Adobe Photoshop to make parts of your image much darker. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're interested in learning how you can actually apply a blur to your image in Adobe Photoshop, then do check out the video on the right of the end screen. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and also remember to subscribe to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.